Okay guys, let's get started on this deal here. Now, if you saw the video I did on advanced bass fishing last week, we did a did one on cold water crankbaits, and we did cover one of the cold water crankbaits was a flat side, but there was a bunch of others in there. But this is going to be a deep dive into specifically for flat sided crankbait situation. And what I'm gonna do here, guys, is I've got five or six of my favorite flat sided crankbaits that I'm gonna go over each one of them and explain the situations that I use them in and the conditions that have to exist before you use each one of these because based upon the size and the profile and how deep they run and the colors, every single flat sided crankbait has a specific situation where it works better than others. So what I wanna do here is I wanna go through what I consider the exact set of conditions as far as during those two time frames of the pre-spawn and during the late summertime we're talking about here. But the main focus on this particular seminar is going to be in the pre-spawn, late winter or pre-spawn. So for the most part, when you're talking about that time frame, late winter, pre-spawn, is water temperatures everything, guys. And you really gotta focus on, say a minimum of like 45 degrees. They start biting a, squirt, a flat sided crankbait when the water starts to get around 45 degrees. Um, and they'll bite it up until the water starts to get, you know, probably maybe 55 degrees. Once you start reaching 55 degrees, you're going to find that a flat sided crankbait is not near as effective as the more uh, traditional crankbait style bodies, the more fat body crankbaits out there. So you have this window that has to exist and have, you know, just the right set of circumstances. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I want to start out with the crankbaits and the flat sided crankbait profiles that work in the coldest water being down to around 45 degrees on up to 55 degrees because I make a transition into that. So first of all, guys, my cold water crankbait, the, my favorite one for the cold water <clears throat> when the water temperature's in the 40s is this Mega Bass Sonic side crankbait. Now there's a couple different reasons why I like it when the water temperature's in the 40s. And a lot of it has to do with the action and the profile. Out of all of the square bill, uh, excuse me, the flat sides, out of all the flat sides that I use here, the Sonic side probably has the widest wobble, even though it's not wide. It's got, it's got sort of a wobble like that on it. It's not like super, super tight. And I find that when that water uh, temperature is really cold out there, they like just a little bit wider wobble and also they like a little wider profile. Now this is just experimentation that I've figured out over the years. Now, one of the reasons that they like a little bit wider profile or wider wobble in that cold water is it's the correlation with having the bait suspend. One of the keys that you have to have with the flat side when that water temperatures is in the 40s is you've got to have perfect suspension on the bait. So I'll take, I'll put the, you know, the suspend strips like we talked about here, uh, when we get into this, I'll show you here in a little bit later, I'll grab them when we take a break here, but you gotta have it suspended or the bait you know, is perfectly level like that. And the reason that you wanna do that is in the super, super cold water, you know, the fish are gonna be a little bit less aggressive, their metabolisms are gonna be a little bit slower. And also I'm looking to get this bait as deep as I possibly can. And in terms of flat sided crankbaits, the, all the ones that I use here, the Mega Bass Sonic side here, is gonna be the one that runs the deepest. Now, most of the time on all of these flat sides right here, I'm fishing them on eight pound test, Seaguar and Vizx line. <clears throat> in the pre-spawn, I just find that eight pound test not only gives them the best action, but it allows you to work the bait through a, a multitude of depth ranges out there. So when the water temperature's in the 40s, um, I wanna try to get this bait down as deep as I can because when the water's that cold, a lot of times you're still gonna have fish that are a little deeper than normal. They're not gonna to be too deep to be caught on a crankbait, but they're gonna be a little bit deeper than they were <clears throat> if the water temperatures were up in the 50s. So that's another reason I use this. And another reason you wanna use the suspension on there, <coughs> excuse me, guy, <coughs> is when you reel the bait down like this and you stop it, or you start to work it real slow, or maybe pull it, or maybe just twitch it a little bit down there, the bait doesn't have a tendency to float up. So if you didn't weight the sonic side in that cold water, you're gonna work it down like this and say you start using a stop and go retrieve, that bait may, may float up about this much and then it has to fight its way back down and then it floats up again. So you never attain that maximum depth. 
So if you weight the bait and it gets down here, it stops, the next time you start working it, it's gonna go deeper and you're gonna get two to three more feet of depth out of this particular bait, out of the Mega Bass Sonic site in that cold water. Now, the conditions that the cold water, the conditions that the Sonic side works best in, in terms of really, really cold water, is you have to have the right combination of cover and you have to have the right water visibility. The water visibility has to be extremely specific. Now, when I'm talking about water temperatures of 45 to 50 degrees with the Sonic side, you need to have water visibilities in that two to three foot range. Um, that, even though that's only a foot, that's quite a bit because a, two, a foot visibility range is quite a bit. So if I get into water visibility of over three feet, <clears throat> it's not gonna be that productive. If I get into water visibility of under two feet, it's not gonna be that productive in that water temperature there. So you got to find the, the place or the part of the lake that you fish or find a lake that has two to three feet of water visibility when that water temperature is 45 to 50 degrees. Now, for the most part, this is going to be probably in late February or March when you have this in most lakes across the country. If you're down south, you know, this is gonna be a little bit earlier. If you're, if you're farther north, like than I am here in the Ozarks, it could be a little bit later. So that's all relative to where you are geographically, but that is what you have to look for is that two to three foot visibility in correlation. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to this week's edition of Advanced Bass Fishing and really appreciate you guys joining me for today's seminar. I think it's gonna be a good one for everybody because we're gonna be talking about flat-sided crankbaits. Uh, crankbaits that basically, just like they say, have a flat side on them. Uh, we're gonna deep dive into this and we're gonna talk about the uh, situations, the applications where they work, um, real specific details on the, uh, the window that they work during the course of the year because this is a specialty lure, guys. This, this is a lure that does not work very well all year long, but there are times of the year under the right conditions they are unbeatable. So we're going to cover all that, colors, lines, lures, rod and reels, and then, you know, talk about uh, where you want to fish them at. So it's going to be a pretty detailed seminar on that. And also, guys, before we get started here, just... Uh, our weekly reminder, um, if you guys like the, what's going on at the Advanced Bass Fishing here, if you like this seminar format and you want to support the channel, um, all the products I talk about today, they'll be linked in the video description of this video along with some other uh, video links that help support the channel. So if you guys want to use that, uh, those links there, that's a good way to help the channel out and get something back for the seminar here. So much appreciated there. Okay guys, this, since the advanced bass fishing is for advanced bass anglers, I, I, I don't wanna like, you know, start from the foundation. I wanna start a little bit higher here. But the first thing I wanna do is I want to uh, sort of go in, uh, I wanna go in to, to sort of tell you when they work more than anything else and why they work. Then we're gonna go into my different colors, the different profiles of flat-sided crankbaits, the different body compositions, whether it be plastic or wood, um, that's going to be the first part of the seminar. Then we're going to go into the equipment to throw it with, the rod and reels, the line, retrieves, cadences, casting angles, all that type of stuff. And then at the end of the seminar, we'll get into the type of areas you fish. But the main thing, guys, is a flat-sided crankbait. Um, it is known as a cold water bait because, in general, the characteristic or the main characteristic in a flat side is the fact that it is a flat-sided bait you know, just like that. It's not a round, you know, tuna body like a lot of crankbaits. So it does, you know, adhere to its name. But the rest of the thing, guys, it has a tight wobble to it like that. It doesn't have this big wide wobble like a lot of crankbaits that hunt like that. It's got a tight little wobble on it. Now, when I first saw a flat-sided crankbait, the very first time I saw them <clears throat> was some of my buddies from North Carolina were fishing them. Now, this is sort of where it started out in North Carolina. And a friend of mine, he sent me a couple of them. I'd never fished them before. And I'm like, I, I put the thing in the water and I saw the thing had just barely moved like that. And I said, that thing has got the worst action I've ever seen on a lure. I, I, I was used to the wider wobbling crankbaits. And to be honest with you guys, I never threw him much for the first couple of years. He kept telling me, it's like, Randy, you've got to throw this thing in cold water. This is a cold water killer. And every time I put it in the water, I just didn't like the action of it. It's like I, when you're reeling it, you can't feel it thumping like that. It's got, you just reel it and it feels just like a, 
you know, just like a rag coming through the water or something. It doesn't have any vibration really. So I just couldn't give any confidence in it until I started really committing to learning the thing because he, my buddy kept telling me how good this thing was. Now this was, you got to realize this was 25 years ago probably what I'm talking about here. So anyway, I gradually, slowly started getting where I was catching some fish on it. And after I started catching some fish and some pretty good fish on it, that's when I really tried to take the time to master and learn every single aspect and detail about it. So that's the main thing. Now, the biggest, I think one of the biggest, um, uh, it's not really a misconception because there is some truth to it, but one of the biggest preconceptions of a flat-sided crankbait is that it's relegated just to cold water. And it is, right off the bat, I'll tell you guys, it is a cold water crankbait. That is where it excels by far. But there also are other situations in extremely hot weather where it works, extremely hot water. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna spend quite a bit of time digging into the cold water application. And then I'm also gonna talk about some places that I've caught them in the late summer and early fall when the water temperatures are in the 80s. Because guys, they will work really good under those conditions. So, um, that's going to be the main gist of the seminar. I'm going to take a quick break here, guys, get something to drink, and then we're going to come back and start digging into this thing and, and get down to the nitty gritty here. So I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. I had a little video glitch there, so we're back on there. So anyway, guys, like I was talking about, um, you're looking for two to three foot of visibility, and then you have to look for the, uh, the right conditions for this type of a bank. And we'll get into it more as far as, uh, you know, when we talk about the exact locations at the end of the video. But what I'm looking for in this particular thing with the sonic side out there, I'm looking for a little bit flatter type of banks um, than you would normally have with cold water cranking and small rock like gravel. But again, we'll get into that towards the end of the video here. But anyway, guys, the sonic side is gonna be my lure of choice um, under those conditions, water temperature 45 to 50, um, water visibility two to three feet. Now the next transition that you're gonna have, this is gonna be when that water temperature it sort of overlaps that cold water. So I'm looking in this next phase that I'm gonna talk about with this next style of flat side for that water visibility to, I mean, excuse me, the water temperature sort of be like 58 to maybe, you know, 53 degrees, something like that, or 48 to 53. Upper 40s to low 50s. There's a real, real small window on this one. Now the one I'm talking about next is some type of a smaller, preferably wooded body flat sided crankbait. This is the uh, Berkeley flat si Fritz side here, flat side. This is a homemade one made by Laser Lure. These are light, squirt, light, I keep calling them square bills. They're, they're light flat side crankbaits. You can see the difference quite a bit on the Mega Bass Sonic side versus this homemade one. It's a little bit more finesse. These, the, the, so I would call this like a finesse flat side crankbait. And if you can't find the handmade ones like this one by Laser Lure. This, um, this uh, fret side, flat side, is a really good uh, model to go through if you can't find this one. But anyway, the next ones here, guys, we'll talk about color here in a second. The smaller, diminutive, more finesse flat sides are for a real, real specific set of conditions. Now these conditions, like I said, low 50s to upper, or upper 40s to low 50, low 50s and then you have to have more stained water you really have to have water visibility for this to work and for like maybe in that foot and a half to two two and a half foot at the most stained water condition maybe even a foot maybe even down to 12 inches of visibility so let's call it let's call it one to two feet for the finesse type crankbait to work now this is going to be effective as that water temperature warms up and as the daylight hours start to get a little bit longer and you start having a little bit more um, warmer afternoons, that type of deal, the water's still cold, but the fish are wanting to move up into that more stained water. So when I'm fishing the finesse type flat side guys, I'm looking for the areas of the lake that have a little bit more off colored water. So instead of like looking for that two to three foot visibility with the sonic side, which maybe can be found like in coves and down on the mid to lower end of any lake. The diminutive finesse flat sides, I'm gonna be looking more in the upper part of the creeks or the upper part of the lake where I have a little bit more stained water. These baits are not gonna run as deep. That's one of the reasons that you have to look for a little bit more dirty water. Say for example, like this laser lure right here, it's gonna run maybe four foot deep, something like that. 
that ideally what I'm looking for with the finesse type flat side is I'm looking for these fish to be on rocky banks that are right tight to the bank. These fish are gonna be tight to the bank. They're gonna be in that deep water. They're gonna be relating to that rock and they're really gonna be um, hunting crawdads, that type of a thing. So that's the second one. And the final one, guys, is the flap slap crankbait. This is the Mega Bass flap slap. And this is quite a bit different. This thing actually looks like a thread fin shad versus like the Sonic side here or the laser lure. It's quite a bit different profile. And guys, this is the one that's going to work better on the upper end of your water temperature. So when you have water temperatures of like 50 to 55 degrees, that's when I, that, that's when I uh, switch to the flap slap especially if I have grass, guys. If you have grass in the lake, I don't care if it's hydrilla, milfoil, whatever type of grass, you will not find a better flat side crankbait than a mega bass flap slap over that grass. But it also works good just on the same type of rocky banks and gravelly banks that we'll talk about here, here a little bit later. Now the flap slap, again, there's a little bit of difference when you're talking about why it works better it's one of those things that you can only theorize about. I can't really give you an intellectual answer why they prefer a flap slap in 55 degree water and prefer a sonic side in 45 degree water or the water clarity variations. It's just, it's just something that I have figured out over experimentation and time of you know, using the baits over and over again. So that's the three, the three main ones, guys. The larger side, sonic side, you know, two to three foot visibility, the finesse type, wooden type flat sides when the water's dirty, and then the flap slap uh, on the little bit warmer water. And the flap slap will always also work in the widest range of water clarity, you know, variations. This thing is gonna work anywhere between one to five foot of visibility, depending upon your sunlight conditions and all that type of stuff that we'll get into here. Okay, now, since we got the baits here, let's talk a little bit about the colors because colors are really critical in correlation with the weather conditions that you have and the water visibilities that you have. Um, there's three basic uh, uh, colors that I use, or three primary colors. One is some type of a shad pattern, um, and the shad patterns that I use, again, are either some type of a, a translucent type shad, like this Mega Bass Matte Shad here, or you know more of a uh, solid color shad like this Tennessee shad pattern. So you have two different pipe types of shad patterns. You got the more finesse translucent one, and then you got the little bit you know brighter one, whether it be a metallic or flat side. That nevertheless are shad. <clears throat> Next one, like I said, is the crawfish pattern, and then you got a bright some type of a chartreuse, a, a bright more aggressive color. So we'll talk about the three colors on those. Now, first of all, guys, the shad patterns are gonna work in your clearest water. So anytime that I've got water visibility that's on the max range of any of these flat sides, I'm gonna be going to the shad pattern. Shad pattern is also gonna be more productive on your brighter intensity light days, like your partly cloudy, sunny days. They may work a little bit better, you know, if you have some type of a uh, calm condition where the fish are a little bit less aggressive, you know, a little bit finicky. Shad pattern is a subtler color and it's gonna catch fish under those conditions. And also guys, a shad pattern will catch um, fish in the coldest water. If, I, if, if you're fishing in the water temperatures that are down closer to those mid 40s, a shad pattern will usually work um, a lot better than about any other color out there. Now, the crawdad patterns, guys, are my dirty water colors. Now, again, it's another paradox because a lot of my crawdad colors, when I'm talking about like a wiggle wart, or some type of another crankbait, they're a clear water color, but in terms of a flat side crankbait, the crawfish pattern, whether it be some type of red or some type of orange pattern, is the dirtiest water color. So when I've got water visibility that's on the lower side or the lower end of my water clarity range, I'm always using the crawfish pattern. Crawfish pattern is always also gonna work better on those days that are a little bit darker. So early in the morning, late in the evening, um, on cloudy days or days that it's raining, you're gonna find that the crawdad patterns work a little bit better. Now, a lot of people would say, well, Randy, you know, if it's low light and it's a little bit dirtier water, why don't you use the brighter color like the fire tigers? And there is some truth to that, but I can tell you one thing, and this is another one of those deals that I can't explain. I have experimented extensively in the pre-spawn. Now this is a little bit different in the fall time we get to later, 
but I've experimented ex extensively in the pre-spawn with colors. And guys, almost every time a crawdad pattern will outproduce the brighter colors like this um, in that dirtier water. Now, so you may ask, when do you use the bright ones like the chartreuses out here? Again, it's another paradox out there. The bright colors, guys, like this, you know, Fire Tiger Sonic Shad here, it's going to work better in the cleaner water if you have low light conditions. So let's say, for example, my upper end for the Sonic Shad, uh, the Sonic side is three foot visibility. Um, if I've got clouds and I've got three foot of visibility and I've got some wind with it, that's when I'll put the bright chartreuse on there because they can see it from a long way away. The water beating cleaner a little bit, they can see it from a long way, yet at the same time, the low light conditions make them a little bit more aggressive on it. <clears throat> also, you're gonna find out that, we talked about this before, the chartreuse side is gonna catch your bigger fish, but it's also gonna catch the least amount of fish. Most of the time, your shad patterns and your crawdads are gonna catch more fish but you can catch the bigger ones on the chartreuse, but they seems like they get educated to it a lot quicker than the other two colors there. Now, as far as hooks goes, guys, one, I think one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people make with the, the flat-sided crankbait is they use too big of hooks. You wanna go, and we talked about this a little bit with jerk baits too in some of the past videos. In the cold water months, guys, you wanna go to smaller hooks. See these little sort of downsized one like this? Do not use too big of a hook on a flat-sided crankbait because number one, a flat-sided crankbait doesn't have a whole lot of action on it to begin with. And if you put bigger hooks on there, it's even gonna decrease the amount of wobble and you're not gonna hardly have any action on that. And then also it gets into the thing about using the light line that we're using and the softer rods that we'll get into. You don't have a lot of power of penetration. So you need that penetration to come from the small diameter hook. <clears throat> and the smaller diameter hook that you have, the easier it is to penetrate a bass's mouth. You don't have to have the force or the pressure to get that barb embedded in the fish's mouth. So don't be afraid to downsize your hooks. Most of the time, like for example, on the uh, Sonic side, I'll put two number fives on it like this. And on the little finesse uh, flat sides, I'll use two number sixes like that. And the same on the uh, flap slap. Most of the time, I'll have two number fives on this. So um, definitely want to go with a little bit smaller hooks on that. Okay, so that's sort of an overview, guys, of the colors and just basically the ones I like. I'm going to take a quick break, and then we're going to get into the equipment that I fish them on. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the retrieves and the cadences and the type of line test, that type of stuff. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, guys, now we're going to get into the equipment, the line, rod and reels, retrieves, all that type of stuff on how to fish a flat side. And one thing I forgot in the last one, I forgot to tell you about the uh, late summer and fall technique that I use with it. Now, the fall technique in the late summer, um, this is what you want to look for. It, first of all, it's all about the Mega Bass Flap Slap. Um, I got on this right about the same year that this thing came out. And I actually won a tournament down at Grand Lake in late October, or excuse me, late August on the flap slap over there. And ever since I won that tournament, I started using the technique in late summer. One of the best ways to catch them guys in the late summer is if you've got a lake that has shallow rock and dirty water. Say for example, you've got, you're back in the creek or up the river arm or something like that. Then you've got a rocky bank. Specifically, I like the rocks that are like the big table type flat rocks. If you can find a part of the lake that has water visibility of less than like 12 inches, dirty water visibility about like that, and shallow rock on a flat bank, and especially if there's some shad or white bass around it, guys, you can take this flap slap in that hot water and just smoke them on it. It's like, there's something about the subtleness of it. It's quiet, it looks like a shad. There, it's the same size of a lot of shad that you see in late summer and early fall, and it does look just like a threadfin shad. But um, I have caught them really good under those conditions, so I did want to throw that out there. But that's such a small window. I've never, I've never been able to duplicate it in the summertime or, or, or early fall in any other type of water other than that dirty water, shallow, flat rock. So if you do have that in the lake you fish, you definitely want to try it. <clears throat> and also, guys, <clears throat> another way you can catch them on that in the summertime on the flap slap is if you have uh, floating boat docks, not the pier type docks, but the floating docks, and you have water visibility of less than two feet, 
a lot of times you can take the flap slap in the summertime and cast it up in those boat slips and down the sides of those docks like that. And those fish will suspend in the summer under those floating docks. And I've caught a lot of good fish on the flap slap doing that. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about the equipment, how to work the bait and everything. Now there's two different setups I use with it. First of all, let me, let me talk about fishing the uh, finesse ones like this, like the small finesse type of flat sides. When I'm using those, these are light, so I'm fishing them on a spinning rod, fishing them on the Mega Bass Whip Snake spinning rod, and every flat, every flat side, guys, I'm using the same line, eight pound test Seaguar and Viz X four carbon line. And um, also I'll have all of my rod and equipment set up in the links of the description here, guys, if you're interested in getting any of these. But anyway, the spinning rod with the eight pound test line allows me to cast these uh, light wooden flat sides a lot better because guys, these things are super light. They, they don't even weigh pro probably three sixteenths of an ounce or super, super light. And since they are light and made out of wood, <coughs> when you cast them, they, they go all over the place. They tend, they're almost like casting the potato chip. So you simply can't cast them very far with a bait caster. So when I'm using the small uh, flat sides, I'm using it on the spinning rod right here. And most of the time, guys, it's pretty simple. I'll just make my cast out there. And I'm usually trying to get that bait down at its deepest part because it doesn't run very deep anyway. I'll just put my rod tip low to the water and just, you know, just a steady crank like that, maybe stop and go, just a steady stop and go. And maybe I'll pull a little bit once in a while. But just about like this, just a nice slow retrieve, you know, stop and go, slow retrieve, pull a little bit like that. Pretty, pretty simple way to fish it. Now for the other ones, guys, for the flap slap and the sonic side, I do use a bait caster for that because they are a little bit heavier. And um, a lot of times I'm not really concerned about getting a super long cast with it. So when I'm using the flap slap and the sonic side, I've got the Mega Bass Jerkbait Special six foot 11 inch rod it's got just a good nice medium tip on it and i'm usually using it on some type of a seven to one bait cast retrieve this is a lose bb1 here this thing's about 10 or 12 years old and pretty much the similar thing guys just make your cast out there on your flat side you always want that rod tip low to the water when you begin your retrieve and just a slow medium retrieve like that stop and go slow medium retrieve and pull the pulling retrieves also it, it'll generate a lot of strikes in cold water so it sort of looks looks like this cast it out there reel it down stop and then maybe pull it a little bit take up the slack reel a little bit pull it a little bit like that and there's something about that taking up the slack and the pulling retrieve that we'll get a lot of strikes with that but it's a pretty it's a pretty easy bait to fish it's not complicated like a jerk bait and you're not speed cranking like you do with a lot of other crankbaits where you're trying to get the reaction strike out of that, out of that uh, fish. You're fishing this thing slow enough to where, yeah, you will get a reaction strike, but it's more of a feeding strike. So you're, you don't want this thing going very fast through the water. It's sort of like, this is about the speed it goes. Just about like this, coming like that, coming up like that. Just sort of a slow medium retrieve is the best way to catch them. Another thing with that is guys, the dirtier the water, the more that you want to slow it down. If you've got water visibility under two feet and it is cold, uh, make sure that you definitely have uh, the, uh, uh, you know, slow retrieve to that slow to medium retrieve. Now, another thing about that, I'll talk a little bit about the suspend strips. You definitely, on all of these guys, on the sonic side, the flap slap, every one of them, you've got to wait every one of them because every one of these things are slow floater. So I usually take a suspend strip or suspend dot, like you can see right there, put it right behind the front hook, and that makes it suspend nice and even like that. And if anything, if you, you never want it floating up. If anything, you want it suspending or just slowly sinking like that. Sometimes I'll even use a slow sink like that if I really want to try to get it deeper. But this is one of the most important elements of it is that suspend strip there. You've got to have these things suspending or you simply can't work it slow enough. Experiment also, guys, when you're talking about the, the uh, speed of your tree, you can vary the stuff as far as the stop and go and the pull and that type of stuff. You can put your own variation on it, but the speed of retrieve, as far as actually how fast you're cranking that reel handle, it has to do with a lot of different factors. It has to do with the light intensity. It has to do with the water clarity. 
It has to do with the mood of the fish. It has to do with the species of the fish. For the most part, if, if you're fishing just for largemouth bass, they tend to like a little bit slower retrieve. But if you have a mixed species, say you, ha you have a lake like we have here, like Table Rock in Missouri, where you have a lot of spotted bass and smallmouth and largemouth, the spotted bass and smallmouth will tend to like it a little bit faster. Not a lot faster, but just a little bit faster than the largemouth there. So anyway, that's just a quick overview of the tackle line, that type of stuff. Um, to reiterate, very two important parts on this last segment. Number one is don't use heavy line. Don't go over eight pound test line on it. And number two, keep your hook small. Using that light line and keeping your hook small are gonna generate a lot more strikes for you guys than, than if you use too heavy line or too big of hooks. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break guys. We'll be back for the final part of it. My voice is starting to get hoarse here. I've been talking for two days now. And then we're gonna get into uh, <clears throat> the type of areas that you need to look for specifically around the lake under different type of uh, uh, times of the month. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, we're back for the final segment here of the video, talking about where you wanna fish a flat-sided crankbait at. Now this, you know, the flat sided crankbait video guys, this is a pretty difficult video to do because this, it, there is such a small window of time where this thing works. It's like, that's one of the reasons that most people don't fish them. And I would venture to say that a lot of the guys watching this video have never caught a fish on a flat sided crankbait. They're, they're so situational that it makes them difficult to talk about because some of the situations don't apply to where you fish at. They don't, they're, they're not going to work everywhere um, like they do in some places. Some places are gonna work better than others. If I had to give you guys a tip, the, the best scenario for a flat-sided crankbait, it is on either a grass lake, it's got some type of submergent hydrilla or vegetation on it, or on some type of a river lake, like a TVA lake, like Lake, lake Gunnersville you know, Lake Chickamauga, Watts Bar, something like that, or possibly an Ozark Lake, um, like a Highland type of Ozark Lake. Um, those are gonna be the three main places that they're gonna work at. But like I said, there's such, you're, you're talking about a time frame of out of 12 months out of the year, there's only about a, maybe a three to four week period where these things work really good at. But if you can fall on top of that three to four week period, you're going to catch a bunch of fish on the thing. It just works really good like that. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, <clears throat> I'm going to break it up in three different type of areas. I want to talk about typical man-made impoundment, where to fish it at. And then I'm going to talk about the, like a TVA, like a river lake scenario. And then we'll talk about a grass lake. Now, first of all, let's talk about grass lakes. Grass lake is going to be completely uh, relegated to pre-spawn. Um, when the water is in the, most grass lakes are down south for the most part. So when the water temperature is in the 50s and you have grass that is at shortest stage, like say for example, you have water depth at six to eight foot and you may have grass that's coming off the bottom a foot to two, maybe three foot off the bottom. This is an ideal scenario for a flat sided crankbait. Basically anytime you can catch them on like a jerk bait or a lipless crankbait, if you can catch them on that, you can also catch them on a flat side crankbait. The flat side crankbait over grass is going to work better on the days that you don't have much wind and a little bit brighter light intensity days. Since most of the time the flat sides don't have any rattle, they don't make much noise, so they're not gonna pull fish from a long way, that is when those brighter, tougher days are more conducive to a flat side. If you could give me like the perfect scenario for a flat side, let's say you and I are out fishing <clears throat> um, early March, late February, early March on Lake Gunnersville, and we're out on a big grass flat where the grass is maybe a foot to two off the bottom and the water depth is maybe five to six feet, something like that. We could take that flat side and put it on the eight pound line and we're gonna get it down close to four foot deep. So it's gonna be right at the level of that grass, same type of place you fish a lipless crankbait and especially if we had like a light wind day, maybe five mile an hour wind with some type of partly cloudy sky, water temperature right around 50, 52 degrees, that's ideal situation for Grass Lake. Now, if you're fishing a river lake, like a TVA lake, guys, I'll give you a prime example where I ripped them on a flat side. You guys ever fish Lake Wheeler? I'm sure there's Lake Wheeler in Alabama, it's a TVA lake. I got out there on Lake Wheeler on what's called the Decatur Flats, 
<clears throat> Decatur Flats is one of the most favorite, the most famous places on Lake Wheeler out there. And it's this big flat that has just, you know, hundreds and hundreds of short stumps out there. It's got some shallow grass. It's got a bunch of ditches. It's got a bunch of gravelly small rock. It's a big flat in about anywhere between three to five foot of water. And in that situation, guys, I have whacked them on the flat out there on a flat side crankbait when the water temperature has been really cold, like 45, 46, 47 degrees. When you're fishing a river lake, like a TVA lake or any place that has current, a flat sided crankbait is gonna work in the coldest water because bass are a lot more active in the winter time or the late winter and early spring in that real cold water if they have current versus on just a traditional lake out there. So when you're fishing a river lake, like a TVA lake, concentrate on the flats that have grass on it, concentrate around any shallow cover like stumps, uh, riprap banks are real good. Just any type of rock or wood structure um, is gonna be really good for that. But the main thing I wanna talk about is uh, the typical man-made impoundment because probably 80% of the guys watching this video, that's what you fish. You, you guys fish places like Lake Norman in North Carolina, here in the Ozarks, some of the California lakes, you know, you know, Eastern Kentucky, Tennessee lakes, that type of deal. That's what most bass fishermen fish. When you're talking about square bill crankbait fishing, in, or square bill thing, when you're talking about flat side crankbait fishing in those type of situations, here's what I look for. My favorite number one scenario is, if you could say, Randy, what is the perfect condition to fish a flat side in? I would tell you, give me a foot and a half of visibility, give me water temperatures that are about 47, 48 degrees, and give me a chunk rock 45 degree angle bank. That is some type of a channel bank where there's deep water close to it. Because in the late winter and early spring, that's one of the first places those big females will move up on is those channel banks, like back in the major creeks. And if you've got off colored water and you've got water visibility, you know, like I said, a foot to two foot or something like that, and you have water, you know, temperatures that are starting to climb in late February and early March, <clears throat> there's going to be some quality fish in that real shallow water. And that's when I like to take that red flat, flat sided crankbait and just try to keep it as close to the bank as I can. A lot of those fish are going to be in maybe foot, two foot of water. I mean, they're going to be shallower than what you think out there. That's, that's probably the best scenario I have ever caught fish on a flat sided crankbait is when you have those situations out there. Now, if you have cooler water and cleaner water, that's when I like to get on those same type of channel banks, but in a little bit clearer water. So say for example, if the little finesse flat side crankbaits were working up in a creek where I had you know 15 inches of water visibility, the flat side, like the sonic side out there, is gonna be for those steeper banks out there where the water visibility is more like two to three feet, especially if I have wind. When I'm fishing the finesse type flat side in the dirty water, I don't really want much wind and I don't really want many clouds. You know, I want that light penetration because that water's a little bit dirtier, but in that cleaner water, I want that off, I want that, um, you know, low light level. Fish are gonna be a lot more aggressive. So I'm looking for water temperatures, say 50 degrees, 52 degrees. I'm out on the main lake, on steep main lake banks, maybe even type of bluffy type banks, making long parallel casts down those rocky banks trying to knock that three to four foot zone um, in those type of conditions. Ideally, I want about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. Um, again, clouds, rain can really help. That's a really big deal with that. <clears throat> now, as far as the flap slap on a man-made impoundment, the flap slap is highly effective over grass or on flatter banks on river type lakes. But in the, in the uh, uh, man-made lakes out there, in the pre-spawn, my number one structure for catching them on a flap slap is riprap. Bass will move up on riprap in early in the year when the water's cold, like in February, March. So it's the same deal. I take that out there, make long cast parallel to the riprap, slow to medium retrieve, trying to hit that three to four foot zone with it. And also with that flap slap, guys, it's sort of like a hybrid jerkbait crankbait. So don't be afraid to like, reel it like a crankbait and just twitch it like a jerkbait a little bit. That'll also produce some strikes, especially on riprap. But riprap is my number one uh, 
you know, structure for the flap slap during the pre-spawn. And then we talked about earlier during the summertime, late summer, um, the flap slap's really good on those flatter banks, uh, you know, flat rocks, docks, that type of stuff with it. But anyway, guys, that's just um, sort of a, a good overview of flat-sided crankbaits. It's one of those things that you're not going to have in your box 12 months out of the year. May, you may not even have it in your box half the year, but if you can, if you come upon some situations that I told you about, just like we covered in this seminar here, just get you a few of them. Just get you, get you a flap slap, get you, a, you know, one of those sonic sides and get you some of the finesse, you know, that Berkeley Fritz side or something like that. Um, just give them a try, throw them around a little bit because the thing about it, uh, one thing I will tell you about flat sides, guys, they catch a lot bigger than average fish. When you're talking about getting a bite on a flat side crankbait during the pre-spawn, it's usually always over a three pounder. It's a quality bait that is real situational, meant for quality fish. So anyway, guys, I hope, hope, hope it helps you guys catch some out there. Um, like I said, thanks for tuning in and we'll, we'll see you guys next week.